Hello, and welcome. Today you're joining me in the fabulous Minecraft recreation of the Zeman building, made by Big Dogs Who. You can find out more about their reconstruction on their YouTube channel, which I've linked in the description. And if you go there, you can also go to their video to download the map and explore the building yourself, if you are particularly keen on Minecraft too. What we're going to do is, we're just going to walk around the building a bit, I'll show you all the places I spent most of my time in my first year, and then explain a bit about how assignments and supervisions worked while I was there, and I'm also going to try and show you the different staircases and demystify the whole weird card access system, so that you don't end up being that kid that's stuck on the wrong side of the door every time they're late for a lecture. So we'll just come down here. So you can see this red thing there, that's the red rocket, it's severely overpriced, um, but if you want you can get a sandwich from there or something. And then this is our way from main campus, but, oh, there's a lot of peace around here. This is our way from main campus across to the Zeman building. So the first, so the first thing, thing we're going to go and see is, is M102. This is one of the biggest lecture theatres that you'll use. It's got a normal capacity of 370 students, but with social distancing it, that reduces down to 44 students. So we'll just go in this door here. The important thing to remember with this place is that it's a good idea to choose which entrance you use wisely, depending on whether you're running late or not. This one over here at the front right, you can see has a desk in front of it. The desk is actually a bit more awkwardly over to this side than that. So if you come in here, you end up having to go like this, and then like that. And it's really quite awkward, um, and it can be quite disruptive. So you don't really want to do that, because you'll get weird looks from your lecturer. Instead, you can come in from this one over here at the front left. This is a bit better, but you do then get faced with a whole room of other students when you come in, which makes it really hard to find a decent seat. So what I think is best, if you're running late, is come over here, up this staircase here, and go in at the top entrance. And this way, you get a really nice view of the whole lecture theatre, Nobody can see you from up here, and you can just locate your seat, save seat one over here, get someone to shove up so that you can fit, and then hop in. And there you go. So at the end of the lecture, you head out whichever door you like. And now we're going to go over to the undergraduate's office. So this is if we turn left at the front entrance instead. So here on either side we've got the computer rooms. And the undergraduate office is somewhere where there's lots of people that are very helpful. I've been in here before to fill up the stapler, to borrow a memory stick, and even to find some scissors to cut out a scratchy label that was in my jeans before an exam. And this is also where they sell lecture and notes, that'll be just where these coloured the piles are here. Office. Um, and in my time at work, I never saw them cost more than £2 per module. They basically just charge you for the fact that they have to print them. And then next door to this, we've got Fiona Linton's office, which in real life is actually a lot more exciting than this. She's got all sorts of bits and bobs, mainly lots of little Lego figures and stuff. So Fiona is the undergraduate and taught programs manager, which essentially means that if you're in any sort of pickle that's beyond what your personal tutor can sort out, she's the person to go to. And talking of personal tutors, these are the people that keep an eye on you throughout your degree and they kind of make sure that you stay on track. Their office could be anywhere, but my personal tutor was Mark Cummings and his office was just here. Oops. So as well as personal tutors, there are also supervisors, and in my first year I was in a group of about five students, and we all had the same supervisor, and he used to meet us in the undergrad workroom each week, um, somewhere like one of these desks here, with, so you've got the 
chalkboard there. So we'd all meet here, sit around the desk, and he would work through our marked assignments with us to clear up anything that we didn't understand. Now, you'll notice that I came through this door over here to get in, but I can't actually get out of that door. There's a button there, and um, there's like one of those card scanning things, but your card won't work for it unless you're like postgrad or something. But you'll see a lot of people trying to get out that way because obviously they came in that way. So bear that in mind. You have to go out this way over here. And if we go this way, we can go and see where your pigeonholes will be. So uh, just here, all along here, in alphabetical order, we've got a whole bunch of pigeonholes. These are first year pigeonholes. And it might be that your assignments sometimes get put in them for you to collect. They're also kind of handy if you've got anything you need to drop off to anyone, just pop it in there. Now, we're going to start looking at these staircases. So this one over here, um, it may look harmless, it is quite harmless. Um, you can see quite clearly where it goes. That is the door to the maths common room, so that's the fourth year undergraduate and above. So, um, yeah, don't go in there. <laughs> that's the special space, but it's very nice in there. So if you come around here, you're going to get to the lecture theatres, and then I'm going to show you how not to get to B201. So over here we've got one of these doors again that doesn't open from this side. This door should not be open here because it is never open. If you get stuck on this side, you can just kind of like try and knock on the door, try and say you're here so that someone lets you in. But basically, this is not the way to B201, which is just through there because pressing the button and using your card doesn't work. Now, this staircase here is the one just right by the entrance. It gets you pretty much anywhere. So, if we go up here, we can get to the top floor. I quite like this floor, actually. This floor's nice. Um, and then if we go over, we'll get to the staircase on the other side, which will take us back down to the undergraduate workroom. So, here we go. So if we keep going down here, we'll get back to the undergraduate workroom. Going down, keep going down. On our left, again, we've got the maths common room. Um, and then, what I want to show you over here, that's the, the undergrad workroom is down there, but what I want to show you is, over here, if I'm on the right floor, then we've got the well-being room. So that's on the right floor. Yeah. On the first floor, over here, this well-being room was introduced, I think it's in here, so that stuff is not actually here anymore, and it was introduced last year and there are really strict rules preventing it from being used for anything other than a quiet space to just get away from the world and have some time out. Um, so this space is actually really nice, it's got like a few little plants, some like colouring books, it's very lovely. Um, just be careful, don't have your lunch in there, because that's not what it's for. And, haha! I fooled you. You thought there were no more staircases, but surely couldn't be. There's actually these little staircases down all around the place, which help you get between, like, supervision rooms up there to supervision rooms down here. And finally, one more staircase, which I very nearly forgot. You probably won't need to use this one. But I kind of want to go to it as an excuse to go past the library. Um, so the Maths Institute Library, you can't actually go in it until you are quite a bit advanced. So once you're in your fourth year of, say, an MMath, then you can go in here. Um, but it's really lovely. I like this little space over here. Um, because there's actually the desk is sort of more out, and that means that you can sit here and no one can see you. You can study your maths in in peace and quiet, and there's all these maths journals everywhere. It's a bit of a, a mathematician's paradise, to be honest. It's sort of the kind of place that anyone else would consider as a bit of a hell, but for 
for some, some of us weird people. It's wonderful. Yeah, and then this staircase here down the back goes down, down, down. So this is quite useful um, if your personal tutor is around here and then you want to get up to a lecture up there quickly. That can get you there nice and soon. So this has been a tour of the Zeeman building. Hopefully if you're studying maths or maths and physics, maths stats, morse, any of the mathsy stuff next year and you just want to be extra extra super prepared and know where your lectures are going to be then hopefully this has helped you and yeah good luck in your first term and have fun if you've got any questions you need to ask zap them over on our work or you can comment them on the youtube video too give it a like give it a subscribe and that's us for today thanks for watching